but I have been promising myself this trip to the waterfalls up in the Peak District. narrow gates there's been some pretty serious mole activity here <laughs> line water around Good morning, it's about 25 past six. Not a bad night, chillier than I expected because um, the sky has cleared and uh, I can see stars and the forecast was that it would be cloudy all night and overcast, uh, which means I have missed the opportunity for some star shots. Breakfast in about half an hour or so, then pack up. I go down to the waterfalls and take some morning shots because the light will be very different. Trying to warm this soup up, but there's not a lot of gas left in, left in this canister. So the pressure is a bit down. It's kind of got to lukewarm stage after about five minutes. I'm very much looking forward to eating this. It's an unusual breakfast, but it's warm. That's going to be lovely. So there you go, time for just a quick classic no visible trace shot. Really important obviously not to leave stuff behind, just a bit of flattened grass basically. We're not going to get that nice rosy, rosy red sunrise this morning. Um, but it is dry and it is really still. So this is one of those shoots that makes you feel a bit like a juggling octopus. Octopus. It's an octopus. <laughs> no idea. An octopus. Um, it's a beautiful scene and um, there's almost kind of too much in it and the temptation is to try and concentrate on everything. I have the added complication this morning that because it's cold, uh, and because I'm using kind of resin based um, neutral density filters, the leaf stuff, leaf filters stuff, um, you've got to be really careful not to breathe on it or just get your hand near it for too long uh, because it just messed up. So, a photographer's lot is a wonderful one, but um, it doesn't always go right. <laughs> I'm having my little share of difficulties uh, with this one, uh, particularly the misting up of the filters. That's the thing when you're using a big stopper. Um, it's worth spending the time to make sure that the setup for every shot is absolutely right, because each shot just takes minutes. So this is super frustrating. You probably can't tell from this, but um, Again, we've ended up with kind of the mistiness in all the wrong places. I'm thinking it might actually be worth uh, changing position now so that I can get more of the background in because hopefully you can see I get some nice colour in the sky. It's a lovely blue. So it's been, um, yeah, it's been interesting just trying to balance all of these things between the ISO, polarizer, big stopper, the aperture, and the shutter speed. Uh, you know, it's potentially quite tangled, but you have to work your way through that. I love it. I love it. This <laughs> shot is going to be the end of me. Um, the lens had missed it up again, had fogged up again, and, um, which I must admit I didn't anticipate, uh, 
because it was covered by a polarizer, but somehow a bit of moisture obviously must have been in there and it condensed on the end and so I guess that is why no, no amount of filter cleaning and demisting and defogging has made any difference to these shots. <laughs> And one more time, we are going to try this shot and see if we can get it without the fog. So this, <laughs> this really is turning into a comedy of errors now. I um, finally got a sharp shot. Nice, very sharp. And um, but only to find that when I put the filter set back on it had obviously moved the camera because I haven't tightened the panoramic head so what a mistake at a maker as they say um, so I had a lovely shot but it wasn't a shot I composed uh, I might be able to do something out of it but I've recomposed I have recomposed and we're going to try again again Okay, so victory will be mine at last. Here we go. We have, I believe, a sharp shot. And it is composed in the way I wanted it to be. And I think the exposure, yeah, the exposure is spot on then. Exposed to the right. No blown out highlights. Hurrah. So um, I'll be looking forward to getting that one back on the computer. Right, I'm going to stop messing around with these big filters now. Well, I'm not sure I've really got my, uh, my wow shot yet. I mean, I've certainly got some shots that I'm, uh, that I'm very happy with. And uh, I have resorted to um, really skimming down what is on the front of the lens here. I've still got the polarizer on. Um, but I've taken off all the gubbins, the leaf filter stuff, because that's going to enable me to go wider if I want to. So I've actually resorted to hand-holding my neutral density filter in front of the lens. And this is the outcome. And that's, um, that's not too shabby. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. Well folks, it's about 25 to 11 and uh, I'm going to have to leave here. And I think I must declare that my work here is done. As, as you can see, I have actually crossed the river and I've made my way down to its banks. But I've got to admit, it's a bit of a scramble and I'm going to have to make my way uh, back up there again. Really, really enjoyed this shoot. What a marvellous place. I have been shooting here now for, I don't know, two, two and a half hours, plus all of yesterday, and I haven't seen another soul. So, if you've watched any of my other videos, you may have noticed there's a bit of a pattern emerging, and um, it goes something along the lines of uh, I say, well, the weather forecast isn't really very good. It's probably going to be grey and overcast. And so there won't be any nice colour in the sky. And, you know, it's basically, I'm setting it up for being a bit of a miserable shoot. And, uh, and then at some point, uh, the sky clears or some colour appears and we end up with some just beautiful scenery and um, it's honestly not deliberate <laughs> just, uh, like for, to, for this trip uh, when I looked at the forecast just the day before and the morning I left it was for being grey and overcast and dull and miserable. Not raining, but just grey and overcast. And uh, 
in the event well it was absolutely spot on for last night and I kind of made use of that for the photography but uh, this morning it's just a beautiful day it's amazing but the light has been lovely because this time of year that's what happens you know this is high winter and uh, and that means the sun never really gets up very high and so you get this lovely warm light and it's worth sticking around for good morning what a day yeah. have a good day so I reckon I got my first camera as a Christmas present at the age of about nine. It came in a bright orange box. It was a Kodak Instamatic, I think. But the thing is that it began, it really began something. But since then, I have been, I think, fascinated with taking pictures. You know, you see a scene like this around me here. And, uh, and you know it's beautiful. You know it's beautiful in your head and your brain tells you what a lovely place. But as a photographer, you have to work out well, what is it that makes it beautiful? What part of that landscape, or what part of that building, or that feature is it that makes it stand out? What is it that makes you sit up and go, wow? And that's what I love. So photography, you have to, you have to work at that. You have to work it out. And when you think you've got your composition, you've got to turn it into something that somebody else can see. And if you're really lucky, they'll look at it and they'll go, wow, that's amazing. How do they do that? Because there is a, it's a dark art, isn't it, photography? And it's quite a technical art. I love that combination of creativity and the technical side of it. For a creative geek like me, there's just nothing better. Now I have to admit that adding video into the mix has been an exciting addition. But it's also been one that's got in the way. But I think I'm getting better at it. Adding camping into the mix has been an exciting addition. And that's also got in the way. But I think I'm getting better at that as well. You know, it's a challenge, isn't it? But we get better at it. We get better at it. Thank you.